Peace be with you all and welcome back to my channel. I'm going to be talking about reason and reasoning and how important it is and how very, very important it is to make sure that one uses their reasoning. And the only scripture I know that tells you to use your reasoning is the Quran. And there is no other one that says it. And sometimes you may find even Muslims saying, uh, well, reason has nothing to do with it, but that's wrong too. Because reason is the entire mess, is the entire principle that one has to follow. And that's a shame because when people say that, because that's very much in disagreement with what the Quran tells us as we find several verses telling you to think and you have many verses telling you to use your reason and um, you know it also talks about people who have an understanding an understanding which is very important very very important and and it has to be understood that it has to be understood as a revelation you're not reading a book, you're reading a revelation. That's from the angle that you look at it at. And it means, what does revelation mean? It means you revealed. It means unveiled. Something was covered before and now it's uncovered. Here's the truth. That's what revelation is, is showing. It is showing you something. It is showing you something. And how important is that? It is showing you something you didn't know. So you have to have an understanding. It's not meant to just be something that has a great deal of blessings just wrapped up in the the sound it makes when somebody recites and it there's a message of peace and love and harmony and respecting all creation even the grass even the trees even the flowers and even the ants and then especially humans and loving and being good to everyone no matter what color they are who they are what they are and um, so that's the thing you have to ask ourselves you have to ask ourselves are we trying to defend? Are we trying to defend what we believe? And or we want to ask ourselves, why do I believe it? Anyway, is it because I've heard it so many times or do I have a reason to believe it? If you believe it because you've heard it many times and it's just a feeling, then you're never going to be able to convince somebody else. Does that make sense to you? It's just by repeating it over and over and over. But what most people what most people want is a reason to believe something so it is that in 
fact, many things that people believe are not believed. Reasons. Reason. Reason, reason, reason. So, many, many things that people believe are actually not based on a reason. Because like Muslims believe in things that people may not understand, but that goes off on other things first. So many things that people believe are not believed because of reasons they have it also much of the things believed they give excuses for why they believe what they believe that is somebody may tell you some strange sounding thing as part of his religion and when you say, how can you believe that you say, well, doesn't it sound like it might be true? And then he tells you in his beautiful way, his amazing way of, of uh, when he finished the beautiful story. And it's in a beautiful emotional story. It was going to convince you now. that it might be true in fact you might have a song in a church where they sing and they sing about a story and you know they they love to say it over and over again over and over again and then you say um uh, how can you believe that? It says all, you know, how can you believe that? And then you get the beautiful explanation. You get the beautiful, beautiful explanation. It's beautiful. So they give you a beautiful explanation of how it's supposed to work. And then I tell them, you've just told me how it works a nice story a nice nice story you told me how it works and and they tell you why it must be true it must be true It must be true. It's true. And then, uh, and then his friend, his friend says, no, 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 wait, let me do it. So then your, his friend tells you the story. Another person, friend, his friend. His friend tells you, his friend tells you another story, the same story, but in his own way. Oh, I'm going to tell him. I'm going to tell him the story. I'm going to tell him the beautiful story. Nope, no reasoning involved. Just, we're going to tell you a beautiful story. Yep, we're going to tell you a beautiful story. This is going to make you believe everything. So, in better words, people, people, they, they think that the more beautiful the story is, the more beautiful it is, that 
the more likely it is to believe. See, but Muslims are supposed to be alerted to that thing. See, like Muslims, like Christians will say, Muslims believe in a lot of strange things. They're very strange. Strange things. And, but your problem is you can't make enough room in your mind for this. And if you just make enough room to accept some of the things that I say, you're being narrow-minded, you're too cautious. Make room, be generous. Admit that maybe this could be sold. They tell us that and they say that over and over in such a way that it wants to make you ashamed of yourself as though well, maybe I should give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe I should find a place for that in my mind. So maybe that could be true. And yet, if you think about it, imagine if you could. Imagine if that situation was reversed. Suppose the Muslims believed in the Trinity. Oops. Suppose the Muslims believed in the Trinity. Huh. So the Muslims would say there was once a man who was also who was also God. Oh, it was a you know an infinite being who used to be only that tall, and he ate food and he walked in the markets. And suppose it was the Christians who said, "No, no, God is one." So. The Christians would say he could never squeeze himself into a body, so on. Suppose that was the situation. Then how generous do you suppose the Christians would be with the Muslims? I suggest it's very likely that you'd be hearing all the time from the Christian is, Look, you foolish people, can't you see this doesn't make any sense? and so on and so forth but because it's the other way around it is they who tell the Muslim don't reject this maybe it's just too big for your mind to understand I'm sure that a great many of them really wish it was the other way around that it was Muslims who had to defend all of these ideas of Trinity all these ideas of trinity in an infinite but a finite god man who died but didn't really die but he definitely died but he didn't die and round and round we go and it's kind of they probably really wish that it was our problem not theirs So, usually when these kinds of things are offered to believers to try to say, maybe you could find room to believe this anyway, they're offered by way of false analogies. That's the kind of thing I talk about. With a gold coin, someone say, look, you know, maybe, you know, might be true. Maybe it's like such and such. And so... I wish I had a dollar for every time somebody said, well, the Trinity is like an egg. See, you have a shell and you have a, cl a clear this and you have a yellow part, three parts, one egg. See, you know, I'd be wealthy if I had a dollar for every time somebody told me that the problem is the best mount with the Trinity. 
is like the Trinity's, you know, the Father is God, he's one third of God, he is God, and the Son is God, and the Son, the Holy Spirit is God, but there are not three gods, there's only one God, the difference being, of course, is the egg, the shell is the one, <laughs> the, the egg, it's not the egg, the wife is not the egg, the yellow is not the egg, there are thirds, there is nothing, that's like the trinity does nothing in nature you can point and say you see that thing that's what the trinity is like like that the thing in nature uh you know there's nothing that comes to mind nothing that comes in three parts but each part is its own whole thing there's nothing like that that's what i mean by false analogies or appeals to common belief is what it's called when somebody tells you something is true because look at all the people who believe it you have two books now written by one missionary and full books and other books trying to show why he's right and basically there's a number of mistakes in them but basically the most recurring mistake is that he'll tell you on one page that he believes and then he'll t give you a list of people who say he's right that doesn't prove anything guys it does not prove anything such and such told me I was right I'm right he said so I'm right, he said so. <clears throat> 500 years ago, I could have proved to anyone that the earth was flat. If that was the case, so the earth is flat, go out on the street and ask the first person you meet. He'll tell you, I'm right, the earth is flat. There's the proof. It doesn't matter if the whole human race says something that doesn't make it true, unless your argument is the whole human race says this thing I suppose but the number of people who agree with you or even the number who disagree with you doesn't have anything to do with the truth or the falseness or what you believe so you can always find somebody who will tell you you're right you can always find something that makes it look like you might be right duping yourself you can surely find someone who will think that you're right someone who says you are right and so you can fool yourself if that's what people want to do if you want to fool yourself Go ahead. Fool. You can fool. Fool. E yourself. Is that what this is about? Fooling yourself? Let me know what you guys think in the comments about this reasoning, reasoning video. Just a few thoughts, a few breadcrumbs. Peace be with you all. I hope you have a peaceful day. And I hope you have a happy, joyous, loving, beautiful, peaceful day. Make sure you smile and spread a smile to the first person you see after watching this video. 